Hi guys, welcome back to the Lexi Hair Channel. My name is Eastiana, and back here we have little Pico, who's my little pup. Today's video is all about how to revive damaged hair. So that's hair routine, best practices, best hair habits, and also a little bit about diet because what you eat plays a huge role in the health of your hair. So that's what to eat and what not to eat, all of that. So let's just dive in. So first up, let's talk about one of the most obvious key players in what contributes to damaged hair, and that's hair dye. So if you are someone that often dyes your hair or bleaches your hair or likes to color it, you know this can be really rough on your hair and cause really dry, brittle strands. So a couple things that you can do to either prevent this other than not color and dye your hair, but if you are changing up your hair color and you're gonna make that trip to the salon and color it, what you can do before that appointment is deep condition your hair. So deep conditioning your hair before your hair dye appointment is basically like prepping your strands and going in with hair that's already super healthy and nourished and it's gonna cause a lot less damage than if you're just going in with your regular strands and they're not prepped. Once you dye your hair, or if you don't dye your hair at all but you do have dry, brittle, damaged hair, a great idea is to keep up the deep conditioning and use hair masks at least twice a week. My favorite is a coconut-based hair mask and I like to put this on after I've shampooed and conditioned. I apply it to my hair in the shower. You leave it on for about 10 minutes. You can shave during that time, hang out, whatever, and then rinse it out with cold water. So if you're nourishing your hair with a hair mask or a deep conditioner regularly every week, over time this deep nourishment and care that you're doing to your hair will definitely help create a positive effect on reviving those dry, damaged strands. Speaking of rinsing your hair with cold water, you don't want to do this just when you're using a hair mask. You want to do this regularly with your everyday showers. So every time you take a shower and you shampoo and condition your hair, I always like to rinse my hair with cold water, at least medium water, never hot. Cold water makes your strands a lot stronger and shinier. So especially if you have damaged hair, turn that temperature faucet down to cold and rinse out your hair with cold water. Even better, you can elevate this by rinsing out your hair with vinegar, which will give your hair a lot more shine. So cold water, vinegar, another great thing to do to rinse your hair with is actually rice water. And this is a really popular practice that women in Asia have been doing for centuries. Rice water is said to give your hair a lot more shine and strength because it's filled with amino acids and nutrients that really build up your hair strands. So I just take a half cup of uncooked rice, put it in a bowl and add two to three cups of water, let it soak for about half an hour, and then strain that water into a container, bring it into the shower, and then rinse your hair after you've shampooed and conditioned with that rice water and that's it so you can do this once a week so just kind of summarizing all of that you want a shampoo and conditioner rinse it out with cold water and then add that hair mask rinse it out after 10 minutes with cold water and then the final step using either vinegar or rice water rinse your hair with that this is like the ultimate shower damaged hair routine I swear by it whether you dye your hair or not, a great idea is to always make sure that you are regularly visiting your stylist and getting those dead ends, those split ends, trimmed off, maintained, taken care of, because the more split ends you have, this will actually give you an appearance of having more damaged hair than not. So if you have damaged hair but no split ends, this helps a lot with kind of the overall look of your hair. It looks a lot more healthy because the ends aren't frayed out and dry and brittle. So every six weeks, make sure you make that appointment. If you dye your hair and you color your hair, you always want to make sure that you're using the right kinds of shampoo and conditioners, so you don't want to feel the fire of continually damaging your hair after you've color treated your hair. So by using the right shampoos and conditioners, well these products are always built for keeping dyed hair, colored hair healthy and nourished, so make sure you're shopping for the right products. In the description box below, you'll find a link to a video that we did sharing our favorite and best hair products, and that includes hair products for colored hair, so check that out after this. Let's talk about some other precautions that you can take to help nourish and revive damaged hair. So if you know that you're gonna be spending an amount of time in the sun, or you're going on vacation or on the beach, well, the sun is very drying and very harsh on your hair, so if you have damaged hair or you want to prevent your hair from getting damaged, I always recommend wearing a hat. Protect those strands, cover your hair, the UV rays are really harsh. And speaking of heat, you should also try to stay away from those hot tools, or if you must, turn down the temperature on them. We all know that heat is really damaging and really harsh on hair, so keep that to a minimum. 
Another hot tool that we often forget about, we usually just think about you know, straighteners and curling irons, but the hair dryer, this is also really damaging and harsh on your hair. So if you don't air dry your hair, which is definitely the best option, make sure you're blow drying your hair with the blow dryer, not too close to your hair, so you wanna hold it a little bit farther away, keep that distance, and make sure you're moving it around really fast so you're not concentrating heat and blasting that heat on the same spot for too long. You should also apply a heat protectant spray or a serum to your hair before blow drying your hair. That way you can kind of protect it from that heat. I always remember to do this when I'm curling or straightening my hair, but I always forget when it comes to blow drying my hair, so just a tip there. Another styling tip when it comes to dealing and managing with damaged hair is not over brushing your hair. So the more you brush your hair, in fact, the more you touch your hair and constantly are doing things to it, well, you're not letting your hair breathe and pretty much like fix itself and regenerate and revive itself. You wanna stop touching it as much as you can. You wanna reduce the amount of brushing. Brushing your hair is just really harsh because you're constantly pulling and especially if you have brittle strands, well, it's really easy for it to fall out and break off. But when you do brush your hair, you always wanna make sure that you are brushing from bottom to top, never from top to bottom. On that note about bottom to top, another method that you should practice is applying your conditioner from bottom to top. So if you've got really damaged hair, I always start with concentrating the conditioner on the ends of my hair and then working my way up. A few great ingredients that you can use that help revive damaged hair. Number one is coconut oil. The best way to use coconut oil is to apply it on the ends and the kind of the mid sections of your hair down here. Try to avoid your scalp unless you have a really dry, flaky scalp, but mostly just concentrate it on your hair down below. Leave it on for 30 minutes to an hour and then rinse it out in the shower. When it comes to rinsing out, I always recommend using a clarifying natural organic based shampoo and then also do this practice about once a week. Another great oil friend of mine is olive oil. So what you can do is use one to two tablespoons of the olive oil and apply it to your hair. Depends how thick your hair is. So if you have really thick hair, you might wanna use a little bit more. If you have thin hair, use a little bit less. Like coconut, leave it in for about half an hour to an hour and then rinse it out. And then you can also skip the conditioner because olive oil is just that nourishing and shiny. Argan oil is another hair best friend, but instead of applying it sort of like as a hair mask or when your hair is damp, um, what I would do is just apply a little bit on the ends or pat down any kind of flyaways and smooth out any frizziness or brittle strands after I've styled my hair and I'm ready to go on my day. This is kind of like a finishing product, a few drops of argan oil and you're good. Okay, let's move into diet and food because this plays a major role in how healthy your hair is. If you have really damaged hair, well, you wanna make sure that you're eating the right things. Some key nutrients that are ultra friendly to your hair and you wanna make sure that you're getting a lot of these. Number one is biotin, which is a form of vitamin B. It helps strengthen and grow your hair. Vitamin D can help stimulate hair follicles that may be dormant and kind of refusing to grow basically. Vitamin E, you know, you often use that on your skin and your face and if it's good enough for nourishing your skin, then it's definitely good enough for nourishing your hair. Iron, iron deficiencies are often linked to hair loss, so you wanna make sure that you are getting enough iron. Vitamin C is also iron's best friend because it helps you absorb iron. And lastly, a lot of omega-3 fatty acids. So what should you stock in your pantry and fridge to make sure that you're getting enough of these nutrients to help revive that damaged hair? Number one is sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are filled with an antioxidant called beta carotene. Your body turns this into vitamin A, which basically protects your hair from being dry and damaged. It also encourages your glands to produce more natural oil in your scalp. That natural oil helps your hair from drying out. You can also find beta carotene in other foods like carrots, pumpkins, cantaloupe, and mangoes. Next up in the game is eggs. Eggs are a huge source of biotin, vitamin D, and proteins that help strengthen your hair. Avocado, avocado is basically a holy grail. It contains a lot of monounsaturated fatty acids, which help nourish your hair. It basically provides natural moisture for your hair follicles. Vitamin E also comes from avocado, which helps absorb into your scalp. Spinach, spinach is another one of those kinds of holy grail foods, superfood if you will. It's very high in iron, iron, magnesium, vitamin A, vitamin C, beta carotene. All of these vitamins and minerals and nutrients are working together to revive your scalp from the inside out and strengthen your hair strands and keep them from being dry and damaged. So if you're not super into the idea of eating spinach, a great way to kind of 
feed this into your body without having to taste it is just popping a bunch into your smoothies. You can kind of hide the taste of the spinach, which really doesn't have a taste, with lots of berries. And speaking of berries, those are really high in antioxidants and also great for your hair. Lastly, I love eating salmon. Salmon is super high in omega-3 fatty acids. Your body can't actually make these healthy fats, so you need to get this source from other sources from foods and supplements. Your body needs these nutrients to help make your hair grow and keep it shiny and full. So if you're a vegetarian and you don't eat fish, you might wanna consider taking an omega-3 fatty acid supplement. But of course, everything that I'm saying, you should definitely check with your doctor and consult them first before kind of going into the supplement route or making major changes to your diet. So we talked about what foods to eat and what nutrients that you really wanna dive into. Let's talk about some foods that you should avoid and the things that are making your damaged hair worse. Number one is alcohol. Alcohol actually slows the levels of zinc in your body and zinc is really needed for keeping your hair growing and strong and healthy, all of that. Drinking alcohol also dehydrates your body. So if you're dehydrated, your hair will become more dry and brittle. So a great idea is to definitely ease off that booze. Your body and your hair will thank you. I also recommend avoiding fish that are really high in mercury, so that's swordfish, mackerel, and some types of tuna. Mercury is not that great for your body. You can do a lot of research on this and see that there are a lot of studies that show that mercury can be really bad for you. And then I wanna reiterate the importance of getting enough iron, protein, and zinc. If you are lacking in these nutrients, it will definitely have an effect on the health of your hair. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and picked up a tip or two when it comes to reviving damaged hair if you are dealing with that. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you next video. Bye.